In this video, I'm going to be going through every single type of problem on the SAT map because the best way to prepare for the test is to know what they're going to ask before they ask it. And this is part three of the four part series of how to beat the SAT. If you haven't already checked out parts one and two, they'll be linked up here. Those are for the English sections. Part three and four is going to be for the math section. So I don't want to waste any more of your time. So let's get straight into how to beat the SAT math. So a quick overview of the SAT math. There's two modules in the digital SAT and each of those modules has 22 questions. The SAT math is broken down into five main categories. And in this video, we're going to be covering the first two main categories, which are algebra and functions and advanced math. Each category has a few subtopics. And for each of those subtopics, I'm going to put an example question and then I'm going to go straight into the answer. So if you want to try answering it yourself, I highly recommend pausing the video right when I get to the question, trying to answer it yourself, and then unpausing it to get the solution. I'm also going to give you a tip with each problem that'll hopefully make it a little bit easier. So without further ado, let's get started with the first main category, which is algebra and functions. So this question is asking about linear equations in one variable. My tip for this one is to isolate the variable step by step. Here what we want to do is make x equal to 3 over 4, which then we can multiply 24 times 3 fourths, which equals 18 and gives us our answer of c. All right, so this next question is linear equations in two variables. So my tip for this one is to remember the slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So here we want to set t equal to 5, then we're just going to plug it in. So 40 plus 3 times 5 is 40 plus 15, which is 55. So our answer is D. So this next question is systems of equations. This is asked a lot on the SAT and it's a very easy question to miss. And for all these systems of equations questions, literally just use Desmos and graph the equation and wherever they intersect is your answer. Here that answer is 25. And if you look at this screenshot of Desmos, you can see that here instead of A, I used X and instead of B, I used Y. And they're asking what the value of B is, which is Y. And here that's 25. If you read the X, Y coordinates, X comma Y, Y is 25. Okay, so the next type of problem is word problems with equations equations. And my tip for this one is you want to translate the word problem into an algebraic equation and do it carefully because it's really easy to mess up. So in this question, we want to set this up as 3x plus 1y equals 71. And we're told that x equals 10 because x represents party hats and y represents cupcakes. So then we get 30 plus 1y because 3 times x, 3 times 10 is 30. So 30 plus 1y equals 71. You subtract 30 from both sides, you get 1y equals 41, divide by 1, and you get y equals 41. So the answer for cupcakes is 41. So our next type of question is a quadratic equation. And the best thing you can do for these is just plug and chug. So here they're telling you f of 2, which means x equals 2. So literally just plug in 2 squared plus 2 plus 71, which is 4 plus 2 plus 71, which is 77. So your answer is 77. Now for these type of questions, these are exponential functions. So my tip for these ones is in general for these, your formula is going to be somewhere with initial value times growth factor to the power of years. So in this one, they're asking what is the best interpretation of 3000. And like I said, if you follow that formula, it's initial value times growth factor to the power of years. So that 3000 is your initial value. Therefore, the answer is D because if you plug in zero for X, which is the number of years, that literally just gives you 3000 times one, which is 3000. So that means, you know, after zero years, AKA your initial value is 3000. So that's why the answer is D. The next type of problem they like to ask is function transformations. This is where the graph shifts. So a tip for this shifts can move a graph up or down or left or right. Up or down is when there's a plus or minus sign after the variable or exponent. And a shift left or right is when there's a sign plus or minus right after the variable. Here they're asking what defines function G. And the answer would be D because it's going down. Notice how that minus two is not immediately after the variable, which is X after X to the third, then it's minus two. So that means it's going down. If it was seven in parentheses, X minus two close parentheses to the third power, then it would be shifting horizontally. But since it's outside that exponent and variable, that's how you know it's shifting down and minus is always down. All right. So the next main category in the SAT math is what I like to call advanced math. So for example, this problem is polynomials and factoring. And my tip for this one is to not overthink it. These are very simple to answer. For example, this question is asking for how many values of X does F of X equal zero. And if you know, you can always substitute F of X with just Y. So it's asking when is Y zero? So basically when does that graph cross the X axis? Because 
when it's on the X axis, it's zero points up or zero points down. So it's Y equals zero. And if you look at this graph, it crosses the X axis three times, one at negative one, one at four, and then one at seven. So that's three times. So your answer is C. So don't overthink these questions. They're very simple nine times out of 10. Okay, so the next type of problem is rational expressions and equations. So my tip for this one would just be to cross multiply and simplify your proportions. You know that both of these proportions, x over y and 24x over ny, they both equal four. So that means you can just set them equal to each other. So here, x over y equals 24x over ny. And if you cross multiply those, you got 24xy equals nxy. You can just cancel out the xy's from both of those because they both have xy and you get 24 equals n. So therefore your answer is 24. The next type of problem is composite and inverse functions. And my tip for this one is to use basic algebra. Here looking at the first top equation, we can just get that x equals three because you just subtract seven and you get 10 minus seven equals X, X equals three. Then you wanna put that three into the next equation. So you wanna do Y equals three plus seven, which is 10 squared, which equals hundred. So then your answer is A because X is three and Y is hundred. So three comma 100 is your answer. The next type of problem is nonlinear systems. And my tip for these is to just use more basic algebra. In this problem, we have 19 times A to the X where A is a positive constant and G of three equals 2,375. It's asking, what is G of four? Here, we're gonna use G of three and the 19 times A to the X, and we're gonna combine those. So we're gonna use three as X, and we're gonna use G of three, which is 2,375. So we're gonna set it up as 2,375 equals 19 times A to the three, because three is X. So then we're gonna divide 2,375 by 19. That gives us the cube root of 125, because it's A to the third equals 125. Take the cube root of both sides, you get A is five. So it's asking what is the value of G of four? Then you're literally just gonna do 19 times five to the four, and that gives you 11,875, and that's your answer. So that was a really quick rapid fire of the SAT math's first two main categories, which are algebra and functions and advanced math. These are two heavily tested concepts, and if you understand the basic gist, the basic algebra, the basic quadratic functions, and the basic advanced math, like polynomials, then that makes the section 10 times easier. I highly recommend you do practice tests and test your knowledge on what you're not getting for these. That'll definitely help you when you're trying to take the test is knowing what you're struggling with and just grinding out a bunch of practice problems on those specific types of questions. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. It's free and 95% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So please, if you found it helpful, consider subscribing and liking the video. It helps the channel out a ton and it lets me know that you want to see more of these videos. But yeah, that's a wrap on this video. Make sure you stay tuned for part four, the finale of this SAT series for the last part of the SAT math. And that's about it for me. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.